watching ASMR Chic. Come relax with me. See, it's kind of hard. 
glass and read to the entire class the first four paragraphs. Marvin's teacher, Miss Klein, spoke firmly as she had many times before. Marvin sounds like a troublemaker or possibly just a daydreamer. I can already relate with Marvin. Marvin did not mind reading, actually. He quite enjoyed it. The text, after all, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, was one of his favorite reads. He could not help but imagine he was Tom on a great adventure, rowing down the river, soaking in the springtime sun, basking in the, in the delights of the various aromas of spring, but duty calls. To read or not to read, that is the question. The outcome of the question would, was obvious. Thus, he was constrained to read or suffer the consequences. Marvin stood. I'm going to use the little Marvin stood, walked to the front of the room, and turned about, staring at the entire class the same way Miss Klein would. Then he cleared his voice. <coughs> the sun rose upon tranquil world and beamed down upon the peaceful village like a benediction. The class began a slow snicker, almost breaking into laughter apprehensive only because they feared the wrath of Miss Klein. If she had not been present at that time, they would have been surely laughed aloud. They would have surely laughed aloud from the start. Marvin had mocked her to detail, making the buffoonery quite festive. He postured himself, passing back and forth across the room, across the front of the room, manipulating his, vo manipulating his voice to match hers, almost to perfection. His voice sounded like someone had a grip on the sides of her throat. That annoyingly squeak, with, that annoying squeak was a bit harder to do. The likeness was enough, with the added animation, to arouse a contagious, comical upheaval. Marvin continued his reading. Now that he was sure he had full involvement from the class, breakfast over, Aunt Polly had, fam had family worship. It began with a prayer built from the ground up of solid courses of scriptural quotations wielded together with within what he had anticipated act actually transpired. His classmates would not continue them, contain themselves any longer. They erupted into a full roar. They all blurted out of, co of a course of crackling and very loud, uncontrollable, uncontrollable laughter. Marvin was Marvin was enraptured by the event. His mocking was so utterly accurate. Who could resist? Well, except Miss Klein, of course, who by the look on her face was not in favor of the impervious, of the impetuous provocation. Miss Klein's not thrilled about Martin's comical. Fastidious, fastidious event had caused a lapse of common sense in the young intellectuals. Reality ceased to adhere within their conscious minds. Unfortunately for them, reality was abruptly awakened, casting its ugly shadow on the bright and glorious moment. Marvin Beckering! He could never suppress the feeling that oscillated through him every time he heard that voice. It always sent pains down his legs. He was severely stricken with sudden weakness. It caused him to sit down, 
lest he fall to the floor and make a fool of himself. Therefore, sit down, he did. Yes, Miss Klein, Marvin expressed with great respect, trying to refrain from smiling, for this would compound the sure punishment he was destined to receive. Young man, this is an outrage. Your mocking will surely receive repercussions. This was to be an academic read, not a circus sideshow. You will receive an F for this anarchy and will report to the principal at once. Marvin's in trouble. How many of you guys had to go to the principal's office a lot when you were a kid or not? Or did you know anybody that was always in the principal's office? I did. The silence was deafening as Marvin stood and walked out in the direction that the bony fingers from Miss Klein was pointing. Therefore, he stared. Therefore, he started his walk of death. No, walk of death towards the principal's office as she had promised. But with this, no remorse. Marvin could not understand why he should receive such a repercussion as his conscience, as his consequence, but the ever present, the ever present sting on his hindquarters helped his perception a bit. This must have been back when they still gave spankings at school. They were probably in the 1920s, 1940s. Reinforced in him the idea that his next recital should definitely be a proper one. The only thing that would compound the punishment was if Ellen Patterson disapproved of his blatant buffoonery. Ellen Patterson must be maybe the principal. I guess we'll find out. He had known Ellen for six years now. She had always been his best friend. Oh, that's his best friend. Never mind. He had known Ellen for over six years now. She had been his best friend. But he was too bashful to admit it. Girls, in general, seemed so mysterious, elusive, kind of like his cat bonkers. Girls are still a little bit elusive these days, but life is beautiful that way. They may be all cuddly and soft, but watch out not to anger them, or they would bite and scratch <laughs> the living daylight out of you. Sounds about right. Marvin was unable to shake the thought of whether or not Ellen would be so angered by his antics. Would she scold him for his impertinence, or would she walk away from him, giving him the cold shoulder? It disturbed him deeply, as it does most of us. As he made his way back to the classroom, his thoughts stirred. Why he worried about her approval intensely disturbed him. His emotions rocked and reeled in convulsed mess. He just had to know. His day would never have any rest without knowing how she really felt. That is extremely relatable. He entered the room in great expectation of glaring eyes or snickers, but to his surprise, there was only a deafening silence. As he made his way down the aisle towards his desk, he stopped briefly and then slowly gazed in her direction, waiting for her to respond to his intending stare. In a brief moment, she looked up from her intense study of rudiments of the language arts. Just quick. Meeting his gaze with her own. Ellen loved Marvin immensely and could only wish he felt the same for her. Unfortunately, when you're only 12 years old, it's hard to get the attention from a young man when his thoughts are so far from romantic encounters. That is true. As a kid, we're not really thinking about that as a um, a male boy kid. You're not really thinking about them. Not quite yet. Usually thinking about playing outside or fishing or something of that nature. I guess now it'd be, probably be video games. I know a lot of 
Besides this, she realized that Marvin was immature and silly. Almost all.
Thomas reminded him of his recommended, of his recompense to her for his antics earlier that day. As Ellen began to exit her desk, she stopped for a moment and touched Marvin on his shoulder. He slowly gazed up at her, straining his smile. She looked into his eyes and smiled, winked at him, and then turned away, leaving the room. In spite of all that had happened, he was at peace with himself just then. The realization hit him as if he just flew down a roller coaster and it caused a lump in his throat. It was from thinking about her. Marvin suddenly felt a warm glow in himself he had never experienced before. The thought of how Ellen admired him in spite of his idiosyncrasies caused him to ponder over their relationship. Was she more than just a great friend? I love you. Have a good day. Or sweet dreams and good night.